All right, so we are now uh, at the last phase, which is the export and report generation. Now I wanna show you something that is new to the software. I'm gonna go ahead and just say export right now. I haven't done anything else. It's going to automatically tell, ask me, did you add a platform for horizontal printing? Oops, forgot that. Did you add uh, the model number, the patient name of the models? Nope, I didn't. It doesn't know whether you did it or not. It's just always gonna pop up. I highly recommend that you do not click this because even, you know, I do enough of these cases that I should always remember and I don't. So let this be a good warning to yourself every single time, a little reminder, go ahead and make sure you get them. So to go ahead and finish this, I'm gonna turn off the opposing. I'm gonna first, I'm going to add a platform, a print platform. Let me show you what that is. If I right click, say add platform, it brings in this platform. Now an update to the software for those that have already used it, the, the, they are automatically embedded. The heels of the models are automatically embedded in the platform. It didn't used to be like that. It was like too close. Now it is embedded a little bit, which is very helpful uh, just to ensure you don't have any problems with printing. So now we just need to scale this down to size. We don't need it sticking off the edges. So I'm gonna grab this little sphere right here, this little node, and just bring it in. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, just so it's a little bit bigger in this direction, not much. And now I'm going to do the same thing right here. And then last but not least, the top one. So basically on all four sides is where I scale it. This little part is fine. That's not gonna cause any problems with printing. These parts are not gonna cause you a problem. If you needed to make it thicker, you can make it very thick. Now that's a waste of resin, but it is an option if you find that your your board, your ends are too th rounded or sharp and you don't have enough support. So that's it. Now the one option we've added is right down here, base platform, where we can separate the platform. That is a new option. You don't have to use it, but now it's again, saving resin, not as much waste, but also allows you for some different trimming options as far as trimming with or without uh, a saw or whatnot. You can use uh, a, a scalpel um, or a Zacto knife, whatnot. It's, there's various reasons that you might, might or might not want this, but just know you can now separate it uniformly right down the middle. One other thing we need to do, is we need to add a label so if I click on show label, it's gonna show the patient's name. Notice it does not move. I move the model to the label. I hover the model where I want the label to be. I now recommend engraving. That's the default in the software because that's for me. It won't be for you most likely, it'll most likely be set to emboss. Emboss means the letters will stick out. Engrave means they'll be sticking in. I prefer that, okay? So now I can just click um, apply. Now this step will take a while because it has to emboss every single model. And I believe on this, well, we have 15 models plus the initial, so it's going to take a little while. Um, just at this point, I usually just kind of get up and go do something else, pull up my email, pull up Facebook or whatever you want to do. But this is just going to take a little while and I'll go ahead and pause the video right now. So you don't have to watch this continue to progress. Okay. So that's finished. These models are all ready. And now we just have to go down to export the models. So I'm gonna click here. It's gonna give me that warning. Yes, proceed. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this folder lower models. Click okay. And it's going to export them. This step can also take a little while. So depending on how quickly it is, I might pause the video here. Um, I'll let you see the progress for a second first so you can see roughly how long it actually takes. Um, it takes, um, we'll say five to 10 seconds per model. So again, it can take a minute or two for it to process all of them. And there we go. So we're at two. I'm going to go ahead and pause here so you don't have to watch the rest of this. Okay, so that's all finished up and we are now uh, pretty much done. We just have to do one last thing and that's create a report. So this is going to some, be something you're gonna want to um, send to your um, send to your uh, referring doc that you, or your, if you're a lab technician or put in your own patient charts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, it'll automatically save to what I want. And here's what the report looks like. Uh, if there's IPR, it'll list the IPR right down here, right before. The, it, this shows the movements of every single tooth and every single face. So that's it. Um, 
I now have my models. So let me go ahead and um, show you. I'm gonna add on a little bit to this last video. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm not uh, yet. What I wanna show you one more thing is that I forgot is that if I pull up these models and just open up one of them, I wanna show you what it looks like uh, as a standard STL. This right here, it is open and it has this little mesh to um, to cross-link it for stability while printing, okay? Saves a lot of resin. You can see that sometimes you'll get these little pulls right here if you draw your numbers, your, your words too close to the base, and that's something that I know better than. I just was doing it quickly. It happens if you get it within the, two, the millimeter, two and a half millimeters of these little cross members. So I should have had it a little bit higher. That would have avoided that. I'm not gonna go back and fix that, but here's the model. Here it is hollowed, and now it's ready to print. These parts right here are flush. Now to make sure that you get a hollowed cross-membered model. It is not imperative you do, but if you want it to, you need to go to Tools, go to Preferences, go to Orthodontics, and then make sure that this box generates steps as hollow models and generate cross pattern. This is the thickness I use, 2.5. I know some people use 2 millimeters. I know some that use 3.2 millimeters. You pick what you think is the most effective. 2.5 has worked well for me in my office. Okay? I did think that was important. I apologize that I'm showing you that after you've exported the models. If you're doing this for the first time, you'll need to check these boxes and hit export again to get them hollowed. But from now on, these check boxes will remain, check, re will remain checked in your software until you uncheck them. Okay? All right, well, that's it for this. Um, let me show you real quick. I'm gonna pause the video for a second.